if you were in the top 10, you were, you were offered a chance to roll the dice. And it was a, uh, a challenge that you kind of didn't know what it was. It involved shooting, but they wouldn't tell us anything else. If you're in the top 10, they have the option for the roll the dice option. The roll the dice option is that pinnacle shot you were shooting off the platform. They have the option to take that shot, boom, hit the tannerite. If they get it, 50 points added to the score. If they miss it, 50 points deducted. The earlier part of the day was an absolute disaster for me, and I was really trying hard to win the land nav, and I lost so many points, I, I just felt like I really had to roll the dice and, and go for it. It was a it was a rough day for me. <laughs> Basic marksmanship is a fundamental for all branches of the military. However, special operation forces and other elite military units require more advanced weapons and skills training. In preparing for the upcoming hostage rescue mission, challenges include firing from multiple positions, utilizing cover and concealment when available, as well as what's called close quarter battle, used when clearing rooms. Therefore. Further firearm evolutions are essential to determine who has the skill necessary to complete the mission. So essentially the course of fire we're going to be taking care of, we're going to start at 25 yards. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to fire a total of 10 rounds at 25 yards. Now the main difference is we'll fire five from the standing position and five from the kneeling position at 25 yards. Now, after the 25 yard line, unload, and we'll move back to the 50 yard line. Right now at the 50 yard line, it is five standing, five kneeling, five pro. Okay, so we go through those iterations, total of 15 shots. My name is Josh Marcus. I'm the owner of Core Lead Operations. We are a full OEM manufacturer based out of Largo, Florida, right outside of Tampa. What I have here today is our CO-15 Battle Series rifles and our CO-15 Bravo advanced lines here. Difference between the uh, advanced line and the Battle Series is all the advanced lines are billet sets. And then we're actually gonna have a Gen 2 version with a slick line uh, upper with no forward assist. With the advanced lines, we actually ran 15 inch uh, hand guards instead of the 17 inch hand guards on these. Reason being, some guys like really fat cans and we wanna make sure they can have the ability to put suppressors on, on these weapon systems. I've actually sent these out to some people to test them out and they said it's the most accurate AR they've ever seen in a production line. So they're really happy with them. First round, the shooters went went well. I think they shot well. The weapon performed pretty well. The real issue is when we move from the 25-yard mark back to the 50-yard mark, they have to unload the weapon. And when they unload the weapon, they eject one of the rounds onto the ground. And only having exactly the right amount of sh for their shots for the competition in the mags made an issue for some of the folks because they're not allowed to bend over in the range and pick those rounds up that hit the ground. Watch 
your muzzle. I think in this second wave, we've made an adjustment. They've added a couple extra rounds in there. So there's a little margin, a little leeway, if you will. Yeah, baby. Five shots kneeling, 11 seconds. Set, ready. What they're doing differently today is shooting from three different positions. They're shooting from the standing position, the kneeling position, and the prone position. And they're seeing some things. I heard some comments like, look at all the dust. When you shoot that low in the dust, there's dust clouds go up. So people are seeing things for the first time, and you can't see the target with the dust clouds and all. Good skill building, and um, so far everyone's doing fine. Five shots standing, five shots kneeling, five shots prone. On a set, ready. I'm born and raised in Texas. I'm a hunter. I am um, a firearms instructor. I love being outside. I love being dirty. So this definitely goes along with my world. When I first heard about Surviving Man, I just thought this was the greatest opportunity ever to be a part of something where I was gonna be put outside of my comfort zone and to kind of breach my own boundaries. And that's really why um, I wanted to do it so badly. To push myself further than I've ever pushed myself before. You go with the four and I'll go with the Yeah, we're gonna basically count off one through seven. Right here. My strengths are definitely going to be on the shooting side, handguns in particular. Uh, I do a fair amount with shotgun as well. There's folks like me that are not from the military, law enforcement, or any sort of uh, occupation where they carry a gun for a living. And then you have the flip side of that, uh, folks that have been professionally trained and spent a long career uh, around guns and firearms and uh, uh, with some of the best of the best. Well, so far it's been a great challenge. So I shoot a competition pistol just about every single week. And then uh, every other weekend about, I shoot uh, either a three-gun match or a rifle match or some kind of other uh, combination pistol, PCC types of matches. You all know Elvis? Ooh. Hey, Elvis! Elvis! Yeah. Somebody ought to say it. You! Elvis is here. Show you another course of fire with the FX Bruno. It's going to give you a short description of the weapon, the characteristics, and then we'll go over the course of fire. And as we did this morning, we're going to start off with the top 10, who were at the top 10 yesterday. All righty? All right, Elvis. Elvis. Thank you, Doc. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody feeling? Awesome. Yeah. Good, good. I'm glad you guys are excited. Today we're going to be shooting the FK Berno PSD model, and basically what it's known for is its 7.5 millimeter round. This weapon is also a multi-caliber platform that shoots in everything from 7.5 to 10 millimeter, 40 caliber, and 9 millimeter with a simple barrel change. 
The PSD is a multi-caliber platform and it's the most sophisticated and capable multi-caliber pistol in the world. Of course, it's originally chambered in the 7.5 FK, the round that made FK Brno famous. But the big news about the PSD is that it's not just chambered in the most powerful and capable pistol cartridge in the world, it's also chambered in the most popular 9mm NATO. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to point it out, get a nice established grip, make sure you've got side alignment, nice good stance, and let that recoil work itself. This course of shooting is with a pistol instead of the long rifle, and it's diff much different ranges, and only three shots per range. So starting at three yards and moving back, uh, three, five, seven, 15, 25, and three shots at each of those ranges. I think the competition's gonna get tougher. I think so too, and what I like about this drill, they're doing what's called the Mozambique drill, and Colonel Jeff Cooper, the father of modern day pistol craft, he had a student who was actually in Mozambique, and the student was being attacked, and he shot him twice and he didn't go down so then he had to come up to the headshot so he termed it the Mozambique drill and when people are wearing body armor or they're high on some sort of drug a PCP or something a lot of times they can get shot set a mass and don't go down so the drill is set a mass then go to the head mass and obviously in the pistol drill at the different ranges if they choose to shoot at the smaller target which is the head they're gonna get rewarded with an extra point for those hits and uh, one point for the body or center mass hits and two Two points for the headshots. And a lot of people do ask, why don't we just always go to the head? And the problem is, it's so much quicker to get a center mass shot because the head can move so much. It just takes longer to aim, but the head's smaller and moves a lot easier than the, the body does. All right, guys, here we go. This will be three shots, head or body, shooter's choice. Again, heads will get you double. Three seconds. Line is set. Head it. My strengths are reliability. I'm just one of those guys that puts his head down and gets it done. I don't need accolades. I just want to get the job done well. That's that's what I'm always been about. There's a lot of really good, talented competitors here, not just physically gifted, but can shoot, can think, and, and, and strategize, and, and really play this game well. Obviously, Chris is in the lead right now and has been at the tops of the leaderboard since we started. We'll see how things shake out with the passports today and find out what the new standings are by tomorrow, because I think there's going to be some, some, a bit of change of guard. In the top 10 so that says something i came here with expectations to win but i felt on a personal level i was doing okay but hearing that i was in the top 10 i feel like i'm doing extraordinary line is set Head in. Surviving man for me means a challenge, a great opportunity to go do some things that I haven't done a ton before. And it's an opportunity to step up and lead and have an incredible experience at the same time. I got into surviving man mostly as a test for myself to see if my own training benefited something like this. My strong points, I think they're physical as well as some of the shooting elements. I do fairly well in those as well, and that's the reason that I'm towards the top. I never really sucked at anything. That's, I think, the key to success in something like this, is being pretty good at everything, excelling in a few events, and that's what kind of gives you a good separation from the rest of the competition. I need to focus more on just being very in the moment, particularly with the weapons. I have not been shooting as well as I'd like to, in part because they're new weapons to me, but it's all the same basic concepts and skills, and I, I just have to focus better. I feel like my biggest strength in this competition is the shooting. When we're out here shooting the pistols and the rifles, I'm on target, ready to go, faster than everybody, getting my accurate shots. I am so in my element when it comes to the shooting side. So that's where I'm gonna excel. So the more of that we do, the more points I'm gonna get. Impressive group. Um, everybody's super friendly, um, really willing to come up and meet you. We're all trying to learn each other's names. 
Um, the range exercise we did was great. It's very professionally run, like they do everything around here. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. It's really interesting to see how it's all going to shake out. After the events of the land nav earlier that day, we felt that it was important to talk to Chris Way to get his take on what happened. We caught up with him near his hometown of Erie, Colorado. I'm not an alpha male, chest beating, I'm gonna tell you how great I am, you need to follow me kind of guy. I'm an introvert that works hard to be able to not always seem introverted. You know, I was a scientist and a climber and an explorer and as a subject matter expert for environmental stuff. After the land navigation um, mistake that I made, I said, Don, let's go talk because something's going on. And, and Don said, you know, thank you for pulling me aside. I wanted to talk to you also. We spoke about it, uh, it got a little heated, but at that point I realized that there was, there was two elements. One of them is the competition the other one was to demonstrate leadership, and up until that point, it wasn't something that I personally recognized. You know, I got mad, I took it personally, and then I made the decision that, that you know, I was able to do both, and I told him, if the rules change, I wanna change with the rules, and if that involves leadership and competition, you know, I screwed up, uh, but I can do that too. And so, at that point, you know, I kinda made that mental switch and, and I tried to dig myself out of the hole that I put myself in. Leif Horton is here. He's got a weapon we're gonna see, and we're gonna try it. Randy and I are both gonna shoot it, but we wanted you to see it, and it's a weapon we're very excited about, and it's a weapon we wanna have on this upcoming mission. So Leif's here to talk about some characteristics of the weapon, and then we're gonna shoot a few rounds. How's everybody doing today? Great, Good, Good, sir. So my name is Leif Horton, as Don mentioned, I work for a company called Texas Tactical. What we do is we strive to provide and find tactical innovations throughout the country and bring them to the forefront for the warfighter and law enforcement community. That being said, I'm about to introduce one of what I believe is one of the coolest innovations we have found out in the market. You guys saw it this morning. The double fold AR. What we've done is we've teamed up with Dead Fit Arms and EOTech to provide you a platform that you can put in a 10 inch bag and collapse down for, for concealment. Up. After the land navigation, we were moved to a canyon and we had a really, really cool shooting exercise. The, the exercise was that we were to start in a storm drain and run down a canyon and when you identified a target, you had to shoot it twice. We weren't instructed how far the targets went, where they were. The only instructions were grab your carbine, load it, run, and you're gonna be scored on hits and time, which is really cool because it's an unknown and, and it's a pure focus and performance, eliminate the threat kind of exercise. We had great rifles, we had great optics, we had great ammo. I'd like to introduce Tank and Jax. They're gonna talk about the weapon and the course of fire you're all about to do. All right, thank you competitors for being here today. 
I wish you all luck. My name is Tank. I'm the owner of Uncle Sam's Misguided Children. I'm a United States Marine veteran. Earned my title, Eagle Globe and Anchor, at the age of 17. I came from Cuba, communist country. So, 2009, I created a brand called Uncle Sam Misguided Children because every one of you is an Uncle Sam Misguided Child. Some of you are more misguided than others. Last year, we started a project with T6 manufacturer to create custom AR-15 series rifles. What we have here is a patent series rifle. Now, Uncle Sam Misguided Children supports our veterans, first responders, and our heroes who sacrifice for this country and the freedom that we have today. Ooh. This patent series rifle as established in 1776 to commemorate our independence. Yeah. Now, I got a beautiful daughter at home. I want her to know that I made a bucket list. So at one, two, three, four, when I say four, I want you to say surviving man, loud or clear. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Surviving man. Get ya. And I'm gonna pass it down to Jax, which is our weapons expert, also project manager, also manager of T6. All right? Let's go, Tank. All right. So what we built on this firearm is a match grade barrel, okay? It's chambered 223 wild. Does everybody know what that wild means? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. You can shoot the 223 or the 556 five, very accurately at longer ranges. Right. When you get on target and you pull the trigger, it's gonna break real clean. We have a stealth recoiled silent captured spring system in the rear. It's not your standard AR spring and buffer. We ended it off with a comp break to help stabilize the recoil system. You guys ready to shoot? Yeah. Yeah. We have a great stage set up by Tank. You got seven targets out here right now, okay? You're gonna come out of the tube. You're gonna pick whichever rifle you want. You got a sniper gray and OD green. Pick up your mag and engage targets as you see them. You guys good? All right, let's go. You're gonna have 14 rounds in your magazine and there's seven targets. Two rounds per target. You're gonna be timed and graded for hits. So the one who wins this is one who shot 14 rounds on target the fastest time. You'll load over here, you'll pick the weapon of your choice. If you fall, of course, keep the weapon down range. Try to keep your shots nice and smooth. You can move fast, but take your shots nice and smooth. Now, the main things we're watching for is the muzzle. Obviously, that's a big one on this one. You should not be running with that finger on the trigger, okay? And preferably, you know, you could also run with it potentially that safety on as well. Yeah, this is gonna be an interesting one. It's always uh, interesting when you're moving fire. Uh, there's some latitude here to make some different decisions. You'll see how that all plays out when they decide to engage their targets and, and, uh, and move further down range. It's gonna be a, a good one. It's gonna be interesting. This is kind of the first moving fire that we've done uh, since we've been here, so this is gonna be good. A lot of the training in the military is you pick up a weapon because you might find that on a battlefield and you've got to use it. And so we're putting some of that in this scenario. It's a battlefield recovery, but not everybody's going to like it a lot. We had the top 10 shooters from yesterday go. Because I was in the lead at that point, I was the very first shooter. So I was able to go out on freshly painted targets and run down a canyon and shoot them. And that is just about as fun as it gets when it comes to shooting. Running down a canyon and shooting steel is so satisfying and it was a really cool exercise. And I think that everybody really enjoyed that. They were fast, a lot of perfect hits. I think they enjoyed it a great deal. It's a whole different movement now. Instead of just staying static on the range, shooting static targets, that's one thing. But this is putting some more real life into it, where they're running, shooting, identifying a target, shooting it, taking different body positions, kneeling maybe, 
It's quite a few uh, levels up from what they've been doing, and I think they've done, for the most part, pretty well. This is the canyon shoot, right? They've got seven targets set up, an AR we're not familiar with, and you run out, grab the gun, load it, and shoot seven targets as they become visible. And it's all under time pressure. Me, I'm a three gunner. This is my bread and butter. I run and gun with rifles, shotguns, pistols all the time. So I knew exactly what to do. I'm totally familiar with the AR platform, how to work that scope, short distance, dial it up for the long range ones. Only dropped one shot because I'm just trying to go as fast as I can. so exciting. That was like the best part so far. It was really fun. I'm not used to these high-end weapons that have these really nice trigger pulls, but what can happen is when you're in a firing position, you fire, you get some recoil like that, but with that recoil, it can cause the, the trigger to fire the weapon again because it's so light and so that's what happened. So I ran out of ammo. I still hit and killed all of my steel targets. <laughs> So I dropped a couple of shots because of that, but it, it went pretty well. Uh, it went pretty good. Uh, I had one miss and my time overall was pretty good as well. I have a lot of experience in that type of shooting. Um, that's pretty much what I do all the time. So I was pretty comfortable with that. First time I ever looked through that optic, typically I run just red dots and stuff like that. Um, but I felt like it went pretty good. was good. I got a little screwed up uh, transitioning targets. I missed two and it was kind of dark in the corner. I couldn't see the target very well through the reticle. I hit 12 for 14. Not a great run, but you know, I can live with it. It felt pretty good. I mean, I was pretty confident. It teaches you to multitask because you know, you got to move, stop, aim, shoot. You got to think about the next target at hand after you take your first shot. There's easily better shooters down there than me, but I'm doing better than I expected and I just came here to have fun and, you know, make an attempt to win, but, you know, so far so good. That was a lot of fun. I haven't done that in a long time. I'm not really proficient at moving with a scope weapon. It's kind of new to me, so uh, I didn't do as well as I was hoping, but that's what we're here for is to learn new skills. It's a new weapon. The weapon itself is awesome. I just have a hard time manipulating one with a scope. We'll get better. We learn every time. I was really surprised when I got picked for the top 10. I don't know where I'll be tomorrow. I did okay, I think. But uh, that's, I'm, just, I'm just a worker. I just put my head down and do the job. And then we'll see where the scores come out. Oh, this sequence uh, going down the valley was awesome. Gun was incredible. Sight was awesome. And it was just fun. It was a little bit something different from what we've been on, like just a standard range to getting out here and having some targets to, to shoot and move to. It was a lot of fun. With the scope versus just uh, the straight, you know, peephole with the post it makes things a lot easier, especially when you got a good quality equipment and scope just like we do down here. Very accurate and smooth shooting gun. So it was awesome, incredible. Hey, that was a lot of fun. Shooting and moving is, is where it's at. Definitely a, a good change. It was a good weapon system. A lot like some of the stuff I use, you know, at home and, and even on duty with the uh, Arizona Rangers. The scope was nice. Uh, it was real clear. You know, it had an illuminated center dot. So put the dot on, pull the bank switch. I was top 10 going into today. Land nav, there were some challenges. I think I probably have some ground to make up. But like I tell you every time, I'm gonna keep fighting. One thing we both enjoyed watching was the different strategies. Some people were slow, methodical, took the good shots. Others sprinted as fast as they could, stopped, took a deep breath, took the shots and brought it back down. And then others, one even tried to, to move and shoot at the same time and it didn't work that well. That takes a lot of training. He changed that, that strategy pretty quickly. Yeah, he did.
I feel like I excelled on most of the shooting portions. So I kind of figured that going into it. I mean, if I wasn't ready, I mean, who was gonna be ready for it? As far as my background with shooting, I think one of the advantages I'm gonna have during this competition is going to be uh, being proficient and being a competitive shooter. Okay, now you top 10 in yesterday's event. You have the opportunity to do the pinnacle shot and you're gonna gain up to 50 points per shot. Who wants to take that opportunity today? As it turns out, not all of the top 10 chose to roll the dice. It's all about taking a calculated risk. Those that had a strong lead played it safe, while others felt it was worth the shot. The contestants that did go up for the pinnacle could take up to three shots. Some chose more, some less. The way it's sitting, you can hit farthest target out. You guys will sit, get yourself in position, all that jazz. They hit the 700 meter target, so take a peek right through. First and foremost, please verify empty chamber, no mag and gun. I give him the hit. Yep. He was. He was oh, yeah. 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 Dial out the, uh, the zoom to start so you can find it. That was high left. Ah. What do you do? It's already on familiar platform, which which did perform very well, I thought. But uh, you know, it was easy to get stable. But yeah, there's nothing to make a call off of. You know, we don't have we don't have dope for that weapon. You know, and I, I know they sighted it in for us, but I don't know what it does in the wind with with those specific bullets. But but yeah, when you look out over this, and I mean, you guys see the footage. There's there's no grass. There's no flags. The targets aren't blowing. There's nothing to make a, a near intermediate and target level wind call. So, you know, it's really, and I, it's the pinnacle shot and that's what it's supposed to be, but it's as hard as conditions could potentially allow. That's tough. Tough conditions for a 700-yard shot. I mean, that crosswind is pretty wicked. So figuring out, you know, so you wait for a lull and try and take the shot then, but then you're already adjusting for a pretty significant win. So it is definitely a tough, tough shot. Not all the way, but close. Yep. Tighten the knob. All right, it's up to you. All right, the wind is not being very nice. No, it wasn't to those guys either. Not the same. Not the same.
I thought it was a hit. shot at the base of the gust. What's up, fire say? She shot on the base of the gust, and I hear the famous click. I'd call that a hit. Okay, so what's the bullet in the distance? Yeah. That's no. it. Once again, how does the bullet get into the distance, skipping through the desert? Oh, I'm just watching on black. You see no, splash beyond? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the oh, shit. Okay, it's no hit. If you're seeing the splash after, then it's no impact. No, that's a miss. That's a yeah. miss. No, that's no, a miss. No, no, that's a miss. Yeah. What? I feel like the table's moving. Left. What the target? Okay. I'd have done it again. Yeah, it was um, it was a really great experience. And it's, and it's I not learned the first a lot. time we see it either. You'll see you'll see the game a couple of times throughout the show. On the next episode of Surviving Man. I don't even know what I thought I was coming into. I knew they they prepped me and said it was going to be hard, but you know this was above and beyond anything that I thought. Stay tuned.